Right now, I'm going to ask somebody that you probably all know from Channel 12 News. Her name is Judy Moore to speak to us for a few minutes. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here with all of you today, and I'm going to jump off what Deanna said, and that is, first to give you a quote, and it's by the great Indian mystic Tagore. And he wrote that you gain your freedom when you attain your truest nature. And that's exactly what Deanna was just speaking about, because we now live in this 24-7 high-tech global marketplace. And uh, we'll speak with some of the girls before, before I came up here. Latoya over here. Smile, Latoya. Just do it for me. <laughs> she wants to be a doctor. Melissa. No, wait. Sarah? Okay. Sarah is into marketing. And then Melissa wants to be a news anchor. And I went, oh. <laughs> and that wasn't coming from a negative place. But it was coming from a place knowing that just like Deanna said, we need to have many skills as we move forward. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. PricewaterhouseCoopers just came out with a survey of CEOs internationally. And they said in order to stay competitive in this environment right now, the two most important ingredients are innovation and creativity. So no matter what field you go into, Make sure you know who you are at your core, your core values, what really gives you joy, what really makes you sing. It's not just about one field anymore, and I'll tell you a story about that in a minute and how that really impacted me. But there are three things you can think about today. You have some great minds in this room, amazing wisdom. Take it in, take what you need, but ultimately, it's going to be up to you to make your own gut decision about who you are and what it is that you want to do. But keep these three things in mind. First of all, success. Don't let anybody tell you your definition of success. That's going to come from inside. When I was a youngster, my definition of success was Barbara Walters. But that changed over time. My skills changed over time. I got old. Older, thank you. Thank you so much for that. You're a viewer. Uh, <laughs> so I had to develop some new skills. And talking about success, it really depends on where you put your attention. A couple of years ago, I was on a Native American reservation up in Toronto, sitting around a campfire, and they told a story. You probably heard this before. This great grandfather with his grandson, and the grandson says. Grandfather, how do I decide what it is I want to do in life? What's going to make me happy? What should I do? And he said, well, grandson, there are two wolves in your head. There's the, the good wolf who says, you're wonderful, you're fantastic, you can do this, you can do that, you can do anything you want. And then there's the bad wolf who says, you stink. You're fearful, you're scared, you can't move forward. And he said, well, grandfather, which wolf do I listen to? And he said, that which you give the most attention. That which you give the most attention. And he said, well, how do I know? They're arguing. They're arguing. He said, again, that which you give the most attention to, the good stuff. Listening to the good within yourself. Not everybody else's definition of success. Number two, serenity. Talk a lot about that. In this 24-7 world, we are getting bombarded with information, right? You've got your iPads and everything. When I first started in the newsroom, we had a teleprompter and it was sticking pieces of paper together in front of the camera. And now most of the kids, I say kids because they're, I could have birthed most of the people in my newsroom right now, uh, they, I have to go to them for technical advice sometimes. So we are getting bombarded with all this information. How are you going to cultivate resilience within yourself and think 5, 10, 15 years from now, what is my work-life scenario going to be? How am I going to integrate those two things? Cultivating resilience, that energy inside, that fire inside, igniting that inside. There is a story that I tell about this lioness, or lion actually. 
And in the plains of Africa, these big lions with their manes, they sit under the tree for days sometimes at a time. And they see a little rabbit go by. And then they see maybe an antelope go by and some other large animal. But they are waiting. They are cultivating their energy for the kill. They're not going to waste their time. And with all the information coming at us, you really need to start deciding how you're going to either aggregate it or navigate it or both. So important. Work life, I hate to say work life balance because I truly don't believe there is such a thing. But there is work life fit. And you can move in that direction. So what is your life going to look like with your career, with your family, with your schooling? How is that going to work for you? Number three, significance. What is significant for you? How are you going to differentiate yourself from the rest of the band out there? And that's where I come into my story, and I'll share just a minute or two of that. After the events of 9-11, and I think most of you, I'm going to say eight or nine years old, something like that, right? I was brought to my knees. I was a television anchor and also working as a news reporter for National Public Radio. And I had to work knowing that, and this is very disturbing, my photographer was killed. That was a really big deal. Yet I had to go on and do the news and do what I had to do. So how could I consume the grief of that, cultivating resilience in some way, right? Getting past that, having enough energy to get through the next day, not knowing if he'd ever be found, and then still move forward and do what it is that I needed to do. So I decided, once again, coming into the idea of significance, just to do some service. And I worked with the children of the victims for weekends, sometimes on weekend nights. And that allowed me to get through my grief. And it also led to a brand new career. And it had to do with work-life integration. How do we keep working in an efficient manner and still somehow stay human and grounded in who we are as people? The human side of my news reporting had gone out the window. I was zombie-like for a while, but I found it again in the eyes of those children. Significance, significance. And I'd like to close with a quote from one of my greatest mentors, Rick Jarrow, who is a Vassar College professor. He's also a sociologist and career counselor. And he says, your life is a work of art, a craft to be carefully mastered. For patience has replaced time, and you are your own destination. I'm going to say it again. Your life is a work of art, a craft to be carefully mastered. For patience has replaced time, and you are your own destination. But your own destination on this journey, on this trajectory of a career path, is not one anymore. It's going to be multiple. And I'll end on this note. Recently, Deloitte and Touche came out with a new book, and they talk about the corporate lattice. It's not a ladder anymore in career. No matter what career you go into, it's a lattice. We're in a global economy, so no matter what you do, you've got to have other skills. Find out what they are now, what gives you joy, what gives you passion, and follow that up. Go to school, do what you have to do, but don't forget who you are as human beings most importantly. Thank you.